What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a free extension from TomTom that helps you manage all of the materials and textures in your model. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so Material Tools is a free extension that you can download from the SketchUp extension warehouse. And what it is is basically a collection of scripts that TomTom Tom has written um, for himself, but then he kind of like packaged them up into his own add-on. Um, and specifically, these are mostly related to more like removing materials and managing um, sizes and things like that. Now, note that on the page for Material Tools, there's also a link to the Sketchication forum thread he's created. So that forum thread gives you a little bit more information on specifically what the different materials do inside of SketchUp. And so there's some in here which I think could be extremely helpful. I think this is gonna be one of those uh, one of those utility tools that you wanna have running in the background of SketchUp just to be able to do some specific things. So let's jump over into SketchUp, take a look at the way that it works. And so for an example model, we're gonna be using the Continental Shopping Street model from Taz 1985 in the 3D Warehouse. So if you do wanna download that and follow along, you can definitely do that. But when you install Material Tools, basically where this lives is it lives in the extensions section of your toolbar right here. And specifically, you can see it at the bottom, it gives you a number of different options for material tools. All right, so the first tool is for a situation when you've got something like this. So what I've done is I've just drawn some boxes in here and what I've done is I've applied some materials to the raw faces um, of some of the faces inside of the group but not all of them, right? So like this one right here has this concrete material, this one right here has the asphalt material, but then if I was to apply a material to this overall box, let's pick like a brick or something like that. Notice how what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have brick material on the outside of the group, and you can see that right here, but then I have other materials on the inside faces. Okay, and so if you were to run this, what this is gonna do is this is going to instance these materials to the faces in the group. So notice how right now, right, this face doesn't have a material applied to it, just the overall group does. Now, one thing to note about this is it isn't replacing the materials that are already in there. So if you have added materials to some faces in here, this isn't going to change that. But basically what it does is if you go in here and you click on instance materials to faces, and then you look at this, now notice what it did is it removed the materials from the overall group and it's taken those materials and it's applied them to the faces like this. Now, this, um, the one thing that it does that I'm not a massive fan of, but we can fix it using these tools so it's not that big of a deal, um, is it does apply the materials to the front and back sides of the faces, which you don't always want. Um, a lot of the time I like to keep the back sides of faces clear um, just so I can see if I have a face oriented incorrectly. But what this has done is this has taken all those materials and applied them to the faces. So massively helpful for materials applied to groups. So next up, we've got a tool that um, is interesting to me. I can see some places where I might use it. I don't think I would use it a lot. And I'm stuck in the middle of this tree right here. But um, basically what the next tool does is it removes all materials from your model. So if you were to click on remove from entire model, literally it's going to remove all of the materials. And so this has removed all of the materials from all of the faces in this model. And if you're wondering why these trees still have materials applied to them, I think it's because these are actually like images in here. I don't think these are actually texture materials. Um, I think they're actually image files. Yeah, see, so these are actually images. So there's really no texture to remove because these are image objects. So this removes all materials from your models. There's not a ton of times that I would really use that. Um, personally, because um, I don't really need to remove all the materials in the model, but if you do need to do that, that allows you to do that. Now this next one is a little bit more useful because what it does is it allows you to remove materials from the selection. So let's say that I was to select this component right here and run extensions, material tools, remove from selection. Well, notice what that did is that removed all of the materials from this component right here. So it completely pulled the materials off of this object. And since this is repeating, um, and each one of these is just a repetition of the same component, um, it pulled it off of all of those instances. But if you did want to like start fresh with a new material on a specific object, I can definitely see myself wanting to do that 
inside of SketchUp. So the next one is interesting. So most people don't even know that you can do this anyway, but um, you can select edges in SketchUp and you can apply materials to them. So for example, if I wanted to apply this material right here to this edge and then go into my styles and edit my edge styles, remember that you have the ability to show edges by the material that's applied to them like this. So you can use this in order to apply colors to your edges. Most people don't do that, but specifically what this next tool is, is it removes materials from edges. And it actually makes a lot of sense um, because he says the tool is designed to remove materials from edges that are preventing your model from purging those materials. And what that means is that means that your models store the material files that have been used before over here in your end model section. But a lot of the time, especially when you're bringing in 3D warehouse models, you wanna go into your window model info and you want to purge the unused, which can get rid of some things like materials. So if I purge this, notice how it got rid of a bunch of materials that weren't being used in this model. Well, the problem is if those materials have been applied to edges in here, like a texture or something like that, even though you can't actually see them, right? They would just be a color. They would prevent you from purging those out of your model. Well, if you run remove from all edges like this, and then you were to purge it, since that would no longer be applied to an edge, you could remove it from your model. So kind of a utility thing that works in the background, but could definitely be helpful. And there is also an option in here to remove all materials from all faces and all edges in your model. So again, that's not something that I would necessarily use, but it is in here as an option. So another function in here that I think is extremely helpful because I don't like having materials applied to the back sides of faces is there is an option in here to remove all back face materials. And so what that's going to do is that's going to take any materials that have been applied to the back side of a face in SketchUp and it's going to remove them. So in this case, notice how that road changed because it actually has the back face orientation facing forward. So to me, that's helpful because face orientation is important um, because it affects the way that things render and other things like that. So another function, which I think is super cool, is it also has the ability to remove a single material. So say I wanted to remove just all instances of this smooth face concrete block in here, I could run remove specific material. And when I do that, that's gonna give me a list of the materials in my model. And so I could pick this smooth face concrete block, click on okay, and it's going to remove that material anywhere it's been applied in your model. So if you have one material that you wanna get rid of, um, you can use this in order to do that. Now, one thing that you should know about, and it's not actually in this extension, it's in another one from TomTom, Tom, is he does also have an extension that allows you to replace materials. And so if you go into the SketchUp extension warehouse and you look for material replacer, that tool is going to allow you to pick a material and replace it with another material in your model. That one is extremely helpful and I, rec and I recommend that everyone have that on their computer um, because you can use it to swap out things like this smooth face concrete block with another material everywhere. So I do recommend that you download and use that extension as well. And so note that that does not work on nested groups and components. So if you have like a group inside of a group or something like that, um, it's not going to remove that material when it's nested that deeply. Um, so there, another interesting function is the ability to remove all textures. So remember that every material inside of SketchUp has both an image slot as well as a color slot. And so if you use the function to remove all textures, what that's gonna do is that's going to take every material that's in SketchUp, it's going to remove the texture image that's applied to it, and it's just going to show the color associated with each one of those materials. So if you do want to just remove the texture images, that's a good way to do that. And that's something you might be doing if you're just uh, unable to find like a super high resolution texture or something like that. It's a very specific use case. Um, but another tool that you might find helpful is you've also got the ability um, to list your textures in your console. So basically what that's going to do is that's going to go through and it's going to find all of the texture materials in this model and it's going to list out the size 
of those as well as the file name and it'll help you kind of track this down. Now, th this is a little bit weird. And so this is obviously a file path from somebody else's computer. So I'm not sure exactly how that works in this situation because I don't actually have these file paths on my computer, um, but it does give you more information on those. Usually I would recommend that you use the extension material resizer instead. That's directly from Trimble and it'll give you a list of the material sizes that are in here. But if you do need that additional information, this allows you to find them. So another thing um, that you can do with materials in SketchUp is say with this block wall, I've got this block wall right here and I use the colorize function in order to change the color. So I'm gonna colorize this, I'm gonna click on, whoops. I'm gonna colorize this, I'm gonna go to my color wheel and I'm going to adjust this block material like this so that it's now more of like a blue or maybe we wanna go in more of a reddish direction like this. And so remember that with most materials, when you do this, it maintains the original color in here. Meaning if I wanted to go back to that original gray, you can do that right here. But if you made a change and you wanted this to now be the default color of that material, you can run the option for apply color adjustments and notice what that's going to do is that's going to set this new color as the default color for this object. So now if I change this and I click on the reset color right there, it's gonna take me back to that reddish color rather than the gray. Now that doesn't really change the color that shows up in here, but notice how the baked in color is a little bit different. Okay, so the next one is one that I don't think I would ever use. Um, ensure unique file names is basically going to go through and make every one of your make sure that every one of your textures has a unique file name. I'm not really going to mess around with that one because I don't want to mess with um, the names of the files um, for my materials. But you could definitely do that. And so another interesting function that's in here that I don't think I would ever use um, is the ability to make roof. And so what make roof is going to do is it's basically going to take whatever your active material is and it's going to go through and it's going to apply it. And you need to do it with a material that's actually in your model. So we'll just pick this random blue color right here. So we're gonna go to material tools, paint roofs, and notice what that does is that comes in here and it takes all non-vertical surfaces and it paints them this material. Um, I don't think that I would ever use this for anything. I mean, it's kind of an interesting application, but notice how it's taking all horizontal planes and it's painting them with a material. Um, I, I can think of some use cases where I might use that, but in general, that's one that I probably wouldn't use. All right, and then this last tool has to do with transparency. So um, because objects in SketchUp have both front faces and back faces, it's possible for you to have a transparent material in here, but then have a solid material on the other side that you can't see through, right? So I can look through this like it's glass on one side, but not the other. Say that you got a 3D warehouse model like this one and some of these faces are reversed and um, you're getting the solid material in here and you don't really like that. You, this gives you the option to basically take those transparent materials and apply them to the back side. So I assume what it's doing is it's going through and it's finding every face that has a material with a transparency higher than zero. And it's probably taking that material and applying it to the back face. And so what that does is that's just a really quick way to ensure that your transparent objects are going to be transparent on both sides. All right, so super interesting tool set um, for removing materials in SketchUp. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you've used this before, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you want to check out more great SketchUp extensions, make sure to check out my extensions guide on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.